This video is intended to walk you through how I got my sample response from the article Survey Looks at Health of American Gays Lesbians. This is the article, this is the questionnaire, the questions that you have to answer for this article assignment. It is 5% of your grade. Um, depending on the semester, you might have a different due date, but the questions won't change. So state the title, descriptive versus inferential, identify three variables. For each one, you want to do quantitative or qualitative, discrete, continuous, or neither, and the highest level of measurement for the variable. Number four, what's the larger population under study? And number five, identify the size of the sample and or how it was obtained. Give me a sampling technique used or suggest one that would make sense to you. So first I want to identify a couple of terms. Question number one, just, to, just to give me some background information about the article. It's a little summary, an opening paragraph. Number two, is this study descriptive statistics or inferential statistics? So if you take a look at our notes, um, descriptive statistics consists of the collection, organization, summarization, and presentation of data. Uh, inferential statistics consists of generalize, generalizing from samples to populations performing estimations and hypothesis tests, determining relationships among variables, and making predictions. So basically, uh, descriptive is just describing what's in the sample and or describing the entire population. And inferential statistics is taking a sample and putting it to the entire population. So when we take a look at this, I'm looking at the top. Survey looks at health of American gays and lesbians. When you look at the top, it found that 2.3% of American adults describe themselves as either gay or bisexual. 2.3% of American adults, it's assuming all American adults, 2.3% of all American adults, which is kind of, did they ask all American adults? No. As you read down this article, they actually asked 34,557 adults. That's it. And from that, most likely 2.3% of the sample uh, identified themselves, described themselves as either gay or bisexual. So they inferred that the entire population, the makeup was the same for the entire population. That's called inferential statistics because it generalized from the sample, 34,000, to the entire population. That's a couple of million or billion. Um, our next question was, is this is the identify three variables that used in this study? Three variables. Let's see what a variable is. A variable is a characteristic or attribute that can assume different values. The values the variable can that a, the values that a variable can assume are called data. A population consists of all subjects that are studied. A sample is a subset of the population. So like before, our sample was the 34,000 and our population was all Americans. So I am looking for variables, a characteristic or attribute that can assume different variables. So one of them right off the bat that you can see is sexual orientation. Right here, they, they found that, um, actually they're describing the data gay or bisexual. Another 1.1% said they were something else. They didn't know or refused to answer the question. Now we have 2.3%, um, 1.1%, and then of course you've got the rest of the people that were asked, which um, I'm going to assume that is um, heterosexual. We'll just leave it at that. So in saying that, the variable, the data, or the outcomes are gay, bisexual, something else, didn't know, refused to answer, or heterosexual. So those are the different outcomes, but the variable itself is sexual orientation. So you got to ask yourself, for this sexual orientation variable, what kind of variable is it? So we've got data. You take a look at the variable. The data, what the data looks like, will tell you whether it's qual qualitative or quantitative. The number, the values take on um, 
descriptions or categorical descriptions. So this variable, sexual orientation, is a qualitative variable. Now, if you look the way this is organized, only quantitative variables can be discrete or continuous. So if a variable is qualitative, it's neither discrete nor continuous. So that's why the variable sexual orientation is qualitative, neither discrete nor continuous. As for its level of measurement, let's see, can they be ordered? So if this goes from the lowest to the highest, everything is categorial. So everything meets the categorial. Is sexual orientation, can it be ranked or ordered? Is it an ordinal level? You've got to keep your opinion out of it. It cannot be ordered. If it is ordered, we all agree on it. So it is not ordinal. So the highest level of measurement for sexual orientation is the nominal level. That's one. Now I've got to find another variable. So I go through and I'm looking for another variable and I'm looking, they're talking about this and they were talking about that. They were talking, they were saying that they were looking at health. So let's see what we got. Talk about anxiety, which is one, but here they talk about also drinks. So among bisexual men, almost 52% said they had five drinks or more in a night during the past year. Now, what question could they have asked all the people? They might have asked, how many drinks have you had? Well, how many nights have you had? Hmm. Could have asked how many drinks they've had in the past year or past during one night. How many drinks have you had in one night? And could have sectioned that in um, five, five or more and grouped them there. 31% of straight men, oh, straight was the other uh, sexual orientation that they had categorized. 31% of straight men had five or more. Okay, so the number of drinks. So let's say the next example of a variable is the number of drinks an adult consumes. The number of drinks an adult consumes. So I have to figure out, is that qualitative or quantitative? The number of drinks. It is numerical, and those numbers have meanings. So it is a quantitative variable. Question, is it discrete or continuous? So think about the responses to the number of drinks. It could be zero, it could be one, it could be two, it could be three. Can it be discrete or continuous? Discrete is countable. Continuous, between any two values, there can be another. Now, if we look at the, for the number of drinks, that would be a discrete variable. One, two, three, four. That's a discrete random variable. So now let's look at the highest level of measurement. Nominal, yes, absolutely. Ordinal, well, five drinks is more than four drinks, so it can definitely be ordered. Interval, intervals are consistent. What that means is that if I look at the difference between five drinks and one, one drink, you can tell that there is four more drinks. The person that drinks five has drank four more drinks than a person who has drank one. So there is, you could take differences or subtraction. When you subtract, it makes sense. Four more, five more, and so on and so forth. Let's look at ratio. Ratio, so interval is when you subtract the two numbers. They have to be numbers. So you're in the quantitative variables down here, qualitative variables up here. Subtraction, differences make sense. Ratio, Ratios or division makes sense. A uh, way to say this is twice as many. Does twice as many make sense? So one person can drink twice as many number of drinks as another person. That makes sense. That's like ratioing 10 drinks to five drinks, and that makes sense. So ratios are consistent. And there's a true zero. Think about that for a moment. This is just a, a, a litmus test for the ratio level. Doesn't always have to fit but zero drinks makes sense. So the number of drinks an adult consumes is discrete, I'm sorry, quantitative, discrete, 
and has the ratio level, highest level of measurement. Okay, let's read on and see if we can find another variable. Um, I had written down about a flu shot. Here we go. Gays and bisexuals fared as well or better than their straight peers in some areas, like exercising. Exercising is a variable. Do you exercise is one type of variable, but how many days per week you exercise is a different type of variable. Taking HIV tests and receiving the flu vaccine. So let's see how I, I receiving the flu vaccine. Um, receiving the flu vaccine. So think of the answers to that question. Did you receive the flu vaccine? The answer will be yes or no, right? Yes or no. So the answers to the question, the variable is the question, the answers are the data. Yes or no, qualitative or quantitative? They are qualitative. That means it is neither discrete nor continuous. Since it's qualitative data, you have to ask yourself, nominal, ordinal? Definitely nominal. Can yes, no be ordered? Mm -hmm. Technically, no. But you could make an argument that receiving the back vaccine is better than not receiving the vaccine. I think it's weak. I think your better answer here is nominal. So those are three of the variables. Now our next question asks us, what's the larger population under study? Who are they really asking about? Who are they asking about? They are asking about Americans, all Americans. They asked all Americans, but they only focused on those people that said that they identified with being gay or lesbian and their health. So our population is all American adults. And our sample size is our 34,557. Did it say how they were taken? When you go through this article, it doesn't say how they chose these 34,557. There's different ways you can do it, but for the most part, it, it did say it was a survey. How did they choose the people in the survey that they asked? They could have actually randomly selected homes, and it was a telephone questionnaire and asked them via telephone. They could have sent um, people out in-person surveys. They could have sent in cards and ask people to fill them back. There's always some downfall to collecting data and how you collect data. You definitely want a random sample when you collect data because if you want to infer to the entire population like this article did, you wanna make sure you're not biasing your sample by not making it random. I hope that helps Do you get through the article assignment. It will, um, you know where to look. I wrote some resources down on the bottom of the page or look in the paper newspaper and make sure it's in by the due date and if it can be accepted late. Don't forget to read the directions on your paper. Good luck.